Hello again, we meet on the journey. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a story, a story that we may have read uh, almost a thousand times. I myself have gone through this story when every time I read uh, the Gospels. But when I read this um, quite recently, about, about two weeks ago, the Lord gave me a sudden revelation, a rhema out of the Logos, which I thought of sharing with you as well. So, let's read from the book of Mark, uh, chapter 10, verse 46. This is not a strange story to you. So, Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus. So let's read. Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and follow Jesus on the road. Chapter 10, verse 46 onwards, till about uh, verse 52. We see Jesus exit in Jericho with a multitude. And there's blind Bartimaeus on a side. We try to picture this in your mind, because then every time I read the Bible, what I try to do is I try to picture myself uh, in that environment. To see how it really happened. So Jesus exits Jericho with a multitude and blind Bartimaeus is there uh, begging on the side of the street and as Jesus exited as he was coming out of Jericho with the multitude blind Mar Bartimaeus cries out son of David have mercy upon me. Many people try to stop him and finally, Jesus stopped, wanted to find out who was this person who was crying out. And they brought Bartimaeus to Jesus. He left his cloak and he asked by blind Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do? And Bartimaeus obviously mentioned that he wanted, uh, he wanted his eyes restored, sight restored. And Jesus heals him. So this is a story that we have read a thousand times. There's something very uh, amazingly beautiful uh, underlying in this story, which the Holy Spirit revealed to me when I read it about two weeks ago. Let me try to share that with you right now. I humbly uh, request of you. This is the personal revelation that I got from the Holy Spirit. So uh, this is the version that the Lord revealed to me. So you may have got several other revelations and if you do not agree with me, uh, please do not email uh, Brother Dilantha or our ministry hotline and uh, ask for uh, the theological uh, explanation to this. But this is a revelation that I got from the Holy Spirit. So I'm just revealing this to you. So what the Holy Spirit revealed to me of this story is to, he asked me to imagine each and every step of that story and Jesus exiting Jericho with a multitude just imagine by this time there were multitude flocking around Jesus for the teaching one the other thing is for miracles and wonders signs and wonders that Jesus did of healing and um, many more people being uh, multitudes being healed so imagine a multitude coming out of Jericho 
Do you think that they must have been silent? All had kept silent with their mouth shut. So the Holy Spirit asked me to just imagine that uproar. A lot of people must have been talking. There must have been a noise. And as Jesus exited, just imagine uh, kind of a riot. Just think about a, uh, a whole lot of people uh, flocking around one person and pressing on him as, as he's uh, moving. Just that chaotic moment, just try to imagine. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you must have had this experience. And uh, when Jesus exits, along with the multitude shouting, there's this blind man, obviously not on his way because he's blind, had he's on the side of the road. And he cries, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Then Jesus stops. Now this is amazing, my brothers and sisters. Why did Jesus stop when there's a multitude making a noise? And how did he hear blind Bartimaeus calling him, Son of David, have mercy upon me? Isn't it amazing? Just stop there, just think about it. What would the Holy Spirit reveal? I'll just share what he revealed to me. And Jesus stopped and the people brought blind Bartimaeus to him. And Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do? Now, in the previous chapters, Jesus uh, spat on a person's eyes, applied mud on him, put his fingers into, uh, into a person's deaf ears and healed them. But this time, in this chapter, in this story, Jesus doesn't even lay his hand on Bartimaeus. He just asks a very open question, what do you want me to do? So where I started is the noise and Bartimaeus calling out Jesus' name, son of David. And why did Jesus stop at that time? What the Holy Spirit revealed to me is Bartimaeus knew how to call Jesus, how to draw his attention. He could have been just, uh, there could have been many other blind people also begging uh, on the road. And he left, let go of his cloak came to Jesus after crying out loud and Jesus stops because Bartimaeus knew how to draw his attention. Amidst a multitude of people, those who are making a big noise, obviously there must have been people saying, heal me Jesus, heal me Jesus, here I am and likewise. That must have been an uproar, a chaotic moment. But Jesus stops because Bartimaeus understood the identity of Jesus. So in our lives also, what the Holy Spirit was trying to reveal to me is that we cry out to our Lord. And sometimes our cries, our prayers are just mere noise to the Lord. It's not a sweet smelling aroma. Unless that we identify who our Lord is, unless that we know how to address our Lord in the title, in respect, in the manner that Lord deserves. This is the secret of Bartimaeus' healing. He called Jesus son of David. He knew of his lineage. In other words, he knew Jesus was the Messiah. To many people, those who were around him that time, to the multitude, Jesus was just a healer. He was a preacher. But only a handful of people understood alongside his disciples who Jesus really was. And Jesus was the Messiah and Bartimaeus understood it. And he called him by the right name and he identified Jesus, although he couldn't see. How amazing that this is, my brothers and sisters, is that people, those who could see, didn't identify Jesus properly. But a person who did not see, who could not see, who was blind, who could only hear, identified Jesus in his true identity. Recognized Jesus in his true identity. So this is the secret as to why 
Bartimaeus received his sight even without Jesus, Lord Jesus laying a single or not even anything or even a hand or a finger on him. So, my brothers and sisters, this is a very short message and I just simply wanted to share this with you. In our prayers, in our day-to-day -day activities, when we meet or when we face certain tribulations in our lives, what we need to do is to give due respect, call our Father, Abba Father, in giving respect to Him in His identity by recognizing who He is in our lives. Our Lord Jesus is not uh, somebody whom we can put our hands on His shoulder and uh, have a chit chat while uh, while having a drink or taking the Holy Spirit to a pub or a club to a place where that, that Holy Spirit uh, would be heard when you take him there. There are places that you should visit, places that you should avoid. Should We should try our level best not to grieve the Holy Spirit who is in us. In other words, not to hurt our Lord Jesus for the sacrifice he made is not for nothing. So, if we do not give him the proper recognition, and if we do not give him the proper uh, respect and regard that he deserves, so do you think that he will respond to us? Out of his mercy he would, but to get the best out of him is to recognize who he is and give him due respect. Of course, when we meet certain nobles in our lives, just imagine that you meet the Queen of England or the King of England, uh, to that matter right now. There's a proper way that you need to address and dress and a proper way to greet, a proper way to even your vocabulary, the words, the choice of words that you need to have is different. How much more that we should respect the King of Kings, the King the Lord, our God, who made this whole universe even before any other kings or queens of Israel. And He is there with us, in us right now. The Holy Spirit is in us. Father, Son and the Holy Spirit have come to indwell in us. So how much more should we respect? The minute that we give the proper respect and regard to our Lord, my brothers and sisters, Amazing results will follow to your prayers. That's one point. Let's take another. When Bartimaeus was called unto Jesus, what did he do? He left his cloak and went to Jesus. What the Holy Spirit revealed to me is that when you go to Jesus, leave your old self behind. That's what represents Bartimaeus' cloak. Because there must have been a special clock to identify blind people those, uh, apart from the rest of the crowd. Maybe that clock, I do not know. This is a revelation the Lord gave me, so I'm just sharing this with you. I'm not a historian to dig deep into identify how the blind people were identified during that time. But the Holy Spirit revealed to me, and I believe that is true. There must have been a special colored or uh, of a cloak of a different color of a tunic, in other words, uh, so to identify blind people that time. But when he went to Jesus, he no longer carried his old self. He left the cloak behind and went to Jesus for his new life. So when we go to our Lord Jesus, having recognized and giving him due respect that he deserves, we should also leave our old self die to our old self on a daily basis and go to him to be refreshed and renewed that he shall definitely refresh and renew us like that of the eagles and renew our youth every time so do not forget one well, i reiterate to identify who our lord is give him due respect second when you go to him leave everything behind go empty-handed He's our provider. He's the one who heals us. He's the Lord. He heals us. He is the Lord who provides for us. How much more He would provide for us, who provides even for the birds and all the animals on this earth, which they do not toil. 
and when we go to him empty handed open hearted with due respect and regard he will just ask the question what do you want me to do without even laying his hands we don't need a special prayer we don't need the laying of hands to be slain by the spirit no lord jesus is able to do it beyond that even without you asking the question lord jesus is capable and is able more than able to answer your problems so just go to him empty handed and see the results i have experienced this and i experience this every day in my life and every time a difficult situation arises what i do is just i give him his due recognition which is due which i owe to him and go to him empty handed so let's pray thank you lord for the revelation that you gave us thank you father for reminding us that you are supreme and that you are god over all the heavens and you are king of kings thank you for reminding us that you are our father thank you for reminding us of the sacrifice that you made thank you father that you are always there with open hands to receive us thank you father because when we recognize you who you are who truly are in our lives and give you that due place in our lives you are always there to help us to grant us whatever we wish and thank you father also for revealing to us that when we come to you devoid of any burdens of the world when we come to you as we are forgetting our old self that you are there to replenish us resuscitate and revive us we give you praise and we give you thanks in the more, most powerful matchless name of our lord jesus christ of nazareth amen